Hey brothers and sisters, welcome back to your girl's channel. So today I'm going to be discussing what the personality traits are of a narcissistic friendship or friend group, also known as a jealous person that is in your circle. Proverbs 12:15 says that the way of the fool is right in his own eyes but a wise man listens to counsel. So before I do get started into this case, I do have one little tiny favor, and that is that you please subscribe. I see so many of you that do watch my videos but haven't hit the subscribe button yet, so what are you waiting for? And also, don't forget to hit the like button and share your thoughts down below. So the story of Shankola Robinson was originally not really covered by major mainstream media, it was mainly covered by the local news stations. It wasn't until a video that showed Shanquella naked and being beaten by her friend. When that video went viral on social media, then the story became national news and major news stations began to cover this story and put the pressure on for legal justice. I personally believe that if it wasn't for the influence and if it wasn't for the pressure of the public, that this case might have not gotten as much traction or even have gotten as much focus. Um, so with that, let's get started into this case. Shanquilla Robinson is a young woman who took a trip to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico with a group of her friends and turned up dead. A little background on who Shanquilla Robinson was. So she was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. Her birthday was on January 9th which means that she would have been turning 26 in this new year of 2023. She graduated from Winston-Salem State University and thereafter became an entrepreneur. And she was running two businesses. One was called the Exquisite Kids, which was a braiding service for children's hair. And her second business was the Exquisite Boutique, where she sold clothing. Shanquilla, who was 25 at the time, and six of her other friends decided to take a trip to Mexico to celebrate two of the members' birthdays, Dejanay Jackson and Nizar Wiggins. Now, out of the group, Khalil Cook was the closest to Shanquilla. He had even taken trips with her family, so he was the one that, I guess you can say, bared the most responsibility of taking care of her since that was his closest friend. So anyways, on October 28th, six out of the seven guests flew into Mexico and they stayed at the resort called Cabo Villas. Nazar Wiggins was the seventh member to arrive the following day, which was the 29th. Now this resort that they were staying at was absolutely beautiful. It had wide open living space, a private pool, hot tub, and they even had scheduled a private chef. There were five bedrooms and enough space for up to 12 guests. Now this villa cost about 1,495 per night, but when you figure that this was being split seven ways, it doesn't sound too bad. So on their first night, everything seems pretty fine. Up until 8.45 p.m., Khalil, the closest one to Shanquella, uploaded a very eerie video to social media. Take a look at what he says. Birthday, buddy. Buddy, 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 buddy. She too full. <laughs> now, even though Shanquella was completely passed out during that video clip, she was still alive. What's very eerie about it is what he was saying while he was recording her. And so that's just the part that really, you know, trips me up, uh, especially considering what ended up happening to her the very next day. Now, this part really tripped me up. So on the next day, on the 29th, Shanquella uploaded a story to her Instagram. And basically, so she's naked. She's not recording herself naked. She had the phone facing um, the opposite direction. So she's looking for her friends in the villa. She's basically walking around like, hey, where are you guys? You know, we're supposed to be getting naked. I'm just assuming that they were going skinny dipping. I mean, that was probably the plan. Um, but it looks like the group was all in one section of the villa and it seemed like they were planning something. Very weird and odd. It don't take that long to get naked. It don't take that long to get naked, hoes. Where y'all at? She told me I'm gonna keep it hot. You gonna keep it hot? What? I'll give my hot bathing suit that I don't want to wear because it's too slow. What Gold said, they croup. 
At around 2 p.m., Khalil, which was the closest friend to Shanquilla, ended up calling Shanquilla's mother, Selimandra, to tell her that Shanquilla had alcohol poisoning and was not feeling well. And he basically said that the doctor was on their way to just assist her and that he will call her and keep her posted on her well-being. Now, in regards to the video of Shanquilla being beaten, uh, Shanquilla was the only one naked. It didn't seem like anyone else was also naked. So my theory is that they basically planned that they were gonna all go skinny dipping and only Shanquilla got undressed while everyone else seemed to be dressed, you know, and fine. It, it reminds me of like that movie, and, and I don't remember the name, but it's, or maybe a TV show where like they basically say to someone, hey, this is a Halloween uh, costume party, so come dressed in a costume. The person then comes to the event dressed in a costume. Meanwhile, everyone else is dressed normal. That's a tactic to humiliate someone. That's to make them come looking very different from everyone else. Now, after a couple of hours, Khalil ended up calling Salamandra back and telling her the news that Shanquella Robinson was dead. Robinson's mom, Selimandra, says within 24 hours of her daughter's arrival, she was dead. Figuring out how or why has only added to the family's nightmare. It started with a frantic call from Robinson's friends. They say she wasn't feeling well. She had alcohol poison. They couldn't get a pulse. Proverbs 12, 26 reads that the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. When you are in pursuit of godliness, you can provide genuine help for other people. But those who are selfish and ungodly will only draw people into the wrong path. There is no way around that. A consistent theme in the book of Proverbs is that godly wisdom is a means to life and success. In a world that is morally and spiritually dark, people are led astray. Now, I do believe that a jealous friend is possibly one of the most dangerous types of people to allow into your personal circle. Um, I saw a sister in Christ said this on her YouTube video. I think her name is Anointed by Fire. And she said, there is not a jealous person that doesn't want to see you dead. Okay, that is pretty deep. That's, you know, to think that when you go to someone in your weakest moment, right, you're vulnerable, so someone cheated, or, you know, there's a loss of someone, anything that is, you know, traumatic, when you go to someone, you're, you're basically venting to them and you're showing them your transparency, your heart. And so when someone is envious or jealous of you, they're actually rejoicing in your misery. They're, they're actually smiling. I, I had a friend once, uh, we're no longer friends, but one time when I was going through a heartbreak and I had found out that I was being cheated on, um, I was talking to her over the phone. I can hear her significant other asking her, why was she smiling? He didn't know what the conversation was. He just simply asked her, why was she smiling? And it really dawned on me, wow, I am pouring my heart out. I am telling this person the pain that I'm in and they're smiling. Like that is the truth of what, you know, being around a narcissistic friend or friend group is. is people, they rejoice in your pain and they get a front row seat to your pain. They want a front row seat. So you'll find that they'll call you often to see how you're doing oh how's it going how you doing but really they just want to they want to see your pain um so these types of people on the flip side cannot celebrate you when things are going good so when you just get engaged or when you are married or when you are having a baby or you just got promoted anything that's elevating in your life that's good they they are not happy for you it, it's a scarcity mindset. They don't believe that you can be blessed and them. So the scarcity mindset is just basically believing that um, there is not enough for everyone. So if you're getting blessed, that's somehow taking away from their own blessing. I personally, I believe in abundance. I believe, you know, that the God that I serve is the source of all of my resources. So I don't believe that if you're being blessed and she's being blessed and he's being blessed, that that means there's less for me. 
because I know that's not, you know, I'm not operating on a limited resources. I know where my source comes from. My source comes from the almighty creator of this universe. So that means there is an endless abundance amount of blessings that is enough for anyone who seeks his will, who wants to do his will, right? So if something good is happening for you, right? For a friend, I am right there applauding you. I am happy to know that you just got promoted or you just got, you know, a, a, a six figure job or anything that just, you know, elevates you to the next point. I am proud of that. But unfortunately, a narcissistic friend or friend group isn't going to be happy because they're in competition. They can't see you succeed or do better than them. Even if you are doing better or even if you reached their level of success, they don't like that because then they start to feel threatened that you're going to end up doing better than they are. Okay, so just keep in mind, pay attention to those who do not applaud you when something good happens. Right, so when you post on social media, you notice who's congratulating you, but you notice more who doesn't. Pay attention to who's silent when you're telling them something over the phone and it's good news and they're not happy. They don't feel happy about it. Pay attention to that silence. Genuine friends will be there for you in the low moments, but they will also celebrate you in the high times. It's not just a one-way thing where they only call you when you're down. It's, yeah, it's it makes you feel important and loved when a friend is calling you when you're down, when you're depressed, when you got cheated on. Yeah, it feels good to have a friend care about you, but they also gotta care when you're doing good too. Because if they only care about you when you're down, that says a lot about the balance of that friendship. It's unbalanced. They only wanna be around you when you're down. But when you're up, they, they don't, they don't want nothing to really do with you. Shanquella Robinson's life was cut short. She was only 25 years old when her life was cut short by her friends. Her friends on October 29th of 2022. The story about alcohol poisoning was a complete lie. They did an autopsy on November 4th and it turns out that Shanquella died of a spinal cord injury. After this death certificate report came out, the group, which is known as the Cabo Six, went completely silent. On November 16th, a video was released which went viral. It is the video of Shanquella completely naked being beaten by Dejanay Jackson. You can hear in the video where the guy friend asks Shanquella, you know, aren't you gonna fight back? And she responds and says no. Now I'm not going to play the video just because I don't like to see fights. I I despise them. I'm not, I've never been drawn to them. Um, I don't think that they're you know appropriate, especially considering the outcome of this video. Now, as horrific as the video was, it did serve a purpose. The video went viral and it allowed for social media to just come together in unity as one voice and put the pressure on. Due to all of the attention that this case, you know, received through social media, it then went on mainstream news and then an investigation was launched. The FBI also got involved. An arrest warrant was granted. However, no arrests have been made as of yet. Now, although the authorities did not release the name on the arrest warrant, it's fair to say that the other members of the group that were there, that recorded the incident, and no one did anything are just as responsible and should face some type of penalty for their involvement. Proverbs 14.30 reads that a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Never underestimate the evil and wickedness of a jealous person around you. They are not to be trusted. The Bible says that love keeps no record of wrong. And so if someone is keeping a record and making you feel little for a past mistake, something that, you know, you may have not been intentional about, you gotta pay attention. This isn't a loving friendship. We're bound to offend someone at some point in our lives. You can't expect to have this long friendship and never once offend each other. It is bound to happen. But if they keep record of that and they can't forgive and they just feel the need to kind of bring it up and, and bring it up and just make you feel little and small for it, th that is a friendship you may want to reconsider. I hope that Shanquella gets justice, but we all know that even if she doesn't in this life, that in the afterlife, her attackers will face the ultimate judge on their day of judgment.
and they will receive their justice then. Thank you guys for watching and until next time, God bless you.